All right, guys, Riddler 2 World Series Pro Division Finals, the match you've all been waiting for. We got Marco the Goat, we got Key and the Octo Kid, a couple of the best players in the world in here about to go at it. Now, I did post a highlight of this match, uh, just one of the games a couple days ago. I had a lot of people asking me to see the full match, so here's the full best of nine, a ton of back and forth action. Hope you guys enjoy it. If you do, like, comment, subscribe, all that stuff is free for you and it helps me immensely. The mission is simple, I'm trying to get more people watching, playing, and streaming this beautiful game. RA2 the Moon Boys, let's go. Anyway, Keen undefeated in RA2 this month. This is best of nine. Tim in the, or sorry, Ed, what the fuck? I've been calling you. That's, <laughs> wait, I didn't call you the wrong name for two years. This is the third time in a row. Ed in the booth. Yes. Ed, who's who's taking this one home? Where's your money at? Oh, uh, dude, Ken's been looking pretty spicy this this month. He's been looking like really strong. He's been playing nonstop, I think. So, uh, I I think he might be playing more than Marco nowadays too. But uh, yeah, I'm gonna go with Ken. I'm gonna go with Ken this time around, man. I have to go with Ken. Yeah, it's uh, it's uh, it's one of those things where. It just depends on how much Kian's playing, right? I mean, you guys all remember World Cup back in December when Kian took down Marco in all three game modes, uh, you know, and it just depends how much he's grinding. And any of you guys have been following him, he's been playing a ton. Uh, sorry, guys, my bot's broken right now, so the vote is actually literally not working right now, the prediction. I had this whole thing set up for how to turn my bot on. We'll get on the next one. But yeah, Kian's been, any of you guys who follow him on Twitch, you can find his link to Twitch and Marco's Twitch to watch their point of views live, redalert2.com. Kian's been playing every day. Uh, he's been playing every day, and uh, you got to think, uh, Kian, if, if there is a time for Kian to beat Marco, today's the day. Of course, always uncomfortable betting against the GOAT, but but yeah, I think Kian's been playing a ton, man. <laughs> I yeah. think he's a pretty the, comfortable This player. map in particular is in Marco's strengths, though, so I think it's going to be a rough start for Kian, perhaps, perhaps, but uh, it looks like Kian probably practices some builds on... Uh, he, you know, you know, Kian, man, he's a young guy. He he likes to go into custom games and he actually practices builds. I've seen him going in on stream, you know, these uh, uh, building placements and all that. I don't think Marco does those kind of things. So Kian takes the game a little more seriously as well. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. And I think and that just Marco's comes. Just, Marco's just natural. <laughs> yeah. Well, and you got to think there was a time when Marco was like that, probably. Right. But like now it's been like yeah. Marco. It's been 10 years. Like Marco, oh, oh. you know. What do we got? What do we got? Look at the right side. I'm sorry. Look at the right side. Kian never took his oil. He's falling asleep already before the series even Kian, started. Kian, you got And Marco's oh. already there to intercept the NG. And Marco gets over there and takes it. Oh, Kian, buddy. Oh, that's rough. So I guess, and Kian got a little, maybe he just got a little bit distracted. Marco was had his had his uh, amphibious transport messing with Kian's islands. So he must have pulled Kian's attention. So Kian forgot to get his, uh, and now Marco's going to go over and takes it. And wow. Yeah, the first point, trying to set some tempo, right? Trying to trying to kind of show show Key and where things are at, you know, set it for him. I, I like that for Marco. That's that's obviously. So, Key comes out with the dread, instantly squitted, not even out of the naval yard, just barely comes out and already <laughs> squitted. Uh, something to take note though, too. Uh, oh God, what was I gonna say about that one? There was something I wanted to say about what just happened here. I forgot. I'm trying to blank. Never mind. Squitted. Well, yeah. False alarm. Across the board right now, we had we saw so we saw Kian his engineer didn't get in. He had an AFK pair drop that actually could have sniped that battle lab, would have canceled the IC. Um, his his dread his his race over to naval tech was about a week late. And got immediately uh, squitted. Oh, yeah, yeah, dude. Okay, yeah. So that's what I was gonna say. Sorry, I <laughs> hell I interrupted you. No, so get this. All the, the, the conversation between uh, auto cap and non auto cap. This is why I was against auto cap for a while. It's all the things that he had to do, right? He had to make a naval yard. He had to move his MCV. He had to uh, capture the airport. He had to capture the two in the island. He had to. Get, yeah. All those things add up. It's how good you are, how fast, how fast you oh. are, and you, you don't forget these things, right? Kian steals the oil on the left. <laughs> so Kian dest destroys Marcos on the right, steals one on the left, gets a, an inch of momentum here. Uh, yeah, no, I think especially on a map like this. I mean, there's some maps where it's like you you run an engineer. You know what I mean? It's, it's like whatever everyone, you know, it's pretty simple, but you're right on a map like this It's another layer of complexity and it is one of those things where the player who's better and faster is gonna get an advantage there That I mean right there. You saw it, you know, Mark uh, Keen got spread too thin Yeah For yeah. sure this bottom side's a little weaker as well uh, in this map here uh, you see Kian moving his MCV uh, He's gonna have to move it all the way to the bottom left Whereas Marco was able to just kind of stretch over there and comfortably start oh. mining on the right side um, here it's a little tougher for the bottom side. Marco gonna steal. Marco gonna take his oil back now. Kian's and so Marco has a split on this left side. Kian is bringing uh, reinforcements over, but that MCV is naked. See if oof, I don't, Kian's not gonna yeah. be able to get there in time. 
No way he gets there nope. in time. He is sending some tanks out there. Uh, is gonna force the cell. And yeah. IC's both re both IC's ready. Uh, IC in uh, Kian's side though. Oh, both players. So there might be both might be more value here for Marco here. <laughs> both players simultaneous ICs and they get all their tanks. That's kind of funny. All of the tanks I see, but the nuclear reactor goes down. Keen called GG's. Yeah, that was like one-sided right there. <laughs> Here we go. Now the predictions are going to work. Now I the predictions the are up. Now the predictions are up. You can type red or yellow in the chat. Let me know who you think is going to win. Someone who gets it right will get to spin the cash wheel at the end. Uh, man, we were so close to that getting that working. So yeah, and well, like you said, I mean that, and that it's very surprising. And and Ke that's where you think Kian's going to excel. Like, like if you say, okay, we're both going to start. Let's start the game, and we both have to do nine monotonous tasks at the same time. You expect uh, Kian to be the one to to excel in that situation, but maybe just getting a little bit woke up here. I know he was streaming earlier, so you'd think he'd be warmed up coming in. And Kian got the bear hug. Maybe that's exactly what he needs. What do you think about a map like this, Ed? Who do you think? Who do you think this one favorites? I, I think it favors uh, Kian. <laughs> Uh, this is this seems like it's gonna be a little close combat uh, type of battle. I, I don't think I mean yeah, of course macro is really important in any map, but I think right here uh, just that center the center gems kind of uh, moves the players toward the center, and you yeah. see more of a battle uh, a little bit sooner than later uh, on maps like these. Yeah, I like I like these kind of maps. I mean, it's just classic SVS close quarter combat style. Uh, Seventy percent of you guys on Marco, thirty percent of you guys on Kian. You guys are so you guys are so uh, so predictable in the chat. Oh, Marco gets the first point. You think Kian can't come back? It's best a nine, boys. You're one inch out the gate. You guys are already counting the Octo kid out. Uh, okay, Ed. Before the action starts, this one I got an interesting idea. Okay. Okay, right now, tanks, they smoke randomly, right? Like, there's no predictability. Like, if you have a tank with 1% health, sometimes it'll smoke, sometimes it won't. It's random, right? Mm -hmm. We could do it. We can make it. I talked to Jalad. We could make it so that if your tanks are less than 25%, they always smoke. And if they're at 50% to 25%, they're, like, sparking a little bit. Now, maybe as a player, maybe that would get annoying. Like, obviously, there's there's cons to it. But as spectators, you know, you see these big bundles of tanks. We have such – it's so hard to know, like, what their health is at. And it would be kind of interesting, like, if smoke was actually an indicator of a tank's health. Um, when you're looking at big tank battles, it would be kind of interesting as a spectator. What do you think? Yeah, that actually sounds pretty cool. It would be pretty nice, too. And even as a player, I don't know if, if a lot of players actually use this hockey, but there is a hockey where you uh, yeah. can select all your uh, injured tanks, and that would be a better indication. Hey, all my tanks are injured. They're all smoking. Let me move them back, you know? Uh, yeah. Select that hockey. Yeah, because I mean, you can. When I've talked, you know, there's different, you know, strategies for that. Obviously, using that hotkey uh, to bring tanks to a service depot or something like that. Obviously, sometimes there's not time, but you'll see top level players, you know, talk, trying to get their their injured tanks to the back, right, so that they can they don't you know go in first and things like that. But I think having that feedback. Being able to look, especially with big groups, being able to look and be like, oh, half these tanks are sparking or smoking, uh, that would be interesting because oftentimes as a spectator, you know, you see, you know, it looks even, all of a sudden one army melts and you realize, oh, that group had been on radiation earlier, but you don't realize it because there's no indication. So anyway, that one, we uh, I talked to Master Jalad. He said it's very easy to do, so could could be possible. Yeah, that sounds really nice, actually. Uh, hopefully we do get it implemented. Uh, dude. Somehow, some way, uh, Marco is on three war factories and a lot more miners than Kian. He seems to be ahead of the game here. Uh, Kian got droned at the very beginning, right when his uh, first miner was coming out of his war factory. So that set him behind a little bit, uh, but that's a huge advantage. We're talking about how macro may not be that important in this game, but Marco's showing that, goddamn, his macro gameplay is always going to prove otherwise. Yeah, it's very interesting. And again, you're seeing Kian. Kian went for the MCV move and Marco didn't, right? So, I mean, that extra build time. But now his fourth War Factory. Oh. Kian, Kian, a little split here, grabs. Ah, does he? Oh, okay. Yeah. Hey. I like that. He needed that. He needed yeah, that. He, he needed, needed something, something to come right here. <laughs> he needed something. <laughs> Uh, Kian over to three war factories now. Marco on four. Another refinery. And this build from Marco, I mean, could it be better? Could there be a better version of this build? pretty looking pretty uh, nice dude yeah it's looking really nice however uh one thing to know is that marco is going toward the left side which is the ore side and uh, kian going on the left side but on his side there's gems right so a new oh. little batch of gems but is it oh. going to be a little too late for this uh, huge attack huge attack here coming 
Yeah, Marco, and Marco is splitting the field now. Tanks on the left and the right. He's out tanking on the left. He's uh, He's got more fodder on the right. So neither of these positions looking tremendous for Kian. Kian does have a forward barracks on the left side to try to pump fodder into that position. Marco goes in. Did he get a minor bottom right, Ed? I think he got a minor bottom right, yeah. Uh, oh. Marco had a three-way split there for a second, but those three tanks oh. kind of AFK. They could have sniped another minor, but uh, he does regroup them on the left side. Huge, huge uh, battle on the left side now here. Uh, yeah. It looks like all of the units are coming into that uh, that area here. Yeah, everything heading to the left side, and Kian's going to be happy about that barracks. Although he does start to go broke, that forward barracks in a position like this can be so nice, pumping dogs right up the front lines, but he is going broke. And for the moment, Marco has a fodder advantage. Tank's about even, Marco. Yeah, yeah Marco ahead here. Tank's yeah. about even. The miners there serving as a little bit of uh, fodder there as well. So another sentry gun might help uh, Kian actually uh, oh, stabilize this fight. Oh, he does get the sentry yeah. gun out. Two vets in that group. This can be very delicate. Ah, but going broke oh. there. Kian, yeah. tough. Maybe Kian lost track of his, his economy for a second there because if he knew he was going to be broke, he could have tried to pull those uh, miners more into the fight or something maybe. Or just, he's so calm, cool, and collect. But then, like, even in this, you just see, like, he comes out the gate and he's just like, like, he woke up this morning. He's like, I'm going to punish Kian. Like, I'm going, like, you would tell, like, the way, like, that perfect build there and then the mcv cell you know what i mean like he was ahead he there was multiple ways he could have played it right he was in the driver's seat goes for the cell and just smashes like <laughs> yeah. and a lot of momentum here for marco uh out the gates early on here um yeah marco yeah. Oh, definitely there's... yeah definitely very nice Kian did open the two war factory uh that was a little bit different than marco's opening right marco didn't get his second war factory until a little bit later so yeah getting droned opening two war factory not the best thing, not the best case for Kian on that one. Uh, but anyways, go, jumping onto this one here. This is a up here. Uh, how, have you been watching this map a lot, or do you get? Yeah. I don't know if I've seen this map on your stream much. Yeah, we. I've seen it a decent amount of times. I really like how it plays. This middle zone being like unbuildable is so interesting with the trees. Um, and uh, and honestly, here's the thing: any map with a with an airport SVS, I love it. I think the conscript pair drop is so funny. And this map kind of has these different little nooks and crannies you can drop them in and get value if the other player's sleeping. Um, yeah, I'm a fan. How, how what do you think about this map, Ed? Yeah, the the definitely the bot or the right side favors the para drop a little bit more, uh, just because you can put them on the cliffs on the top side, whereas not really on the bottom. Really, the, the buildings are not really like latched on or next to the uh, cliffs on the bottom side. Oh. On the top side, you can snipe sneaky refs, right? You can snipe a ref or, or a war factory if it gets placed too close to the cliff. So a little extra value there. Uh, I like the center part where the trees, uh, they basically don't allow tanks to go through, right? Uh, you can go uh, vertical, but not horizontal. It's like... <laughs> Oh, uh, yeah, you, you can't, can't even move. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I always think that. I'm always like, oh, it'll be interesting to see. And then I feel like you just never, you just never see any action. We do see a first offensive pair drop from Kian, and uh, pretty That's interesting. Get it. Nice. Oh, and Marco, and Marco was, Marco was broke for a sec. Wow. Okay. And that's how it all Huge starts, value. boys. It all starts with the para drop. I'm telling you, conscripts. Hey, Marco still broke. He's zero oh. bucks. He's gonna oh. use a factory <laughs> and a power plant. He oh, wait, dude. Oh. Okay, a, a miner was coming out of the war factory. I believe he lost the miner when he lost the war factory as well. Oh, was there a miner? Oh, there was a miner yes. coming out, and he gets another power plant. <laughs> Airdrop OP. Oh my gosh. Okay, and wow. one up for Kian. <laughs> yeah. So who cares about the? Drop a para drop. Uh, apparently, yeah. left side para drop OP, not the right side, not the right side. Yeah, Watch I'm a there. big fan. I think they're. I think they're. I think the conscript para drop is like the perfect. Like from like game design perspective, I think it's like the funnest mechanic because there's so many different things you can do with it but it's not at the end of the day the other player has to slip a little bit like you have to you know i've seen players you know attack and then use it on the backside to pull attention or you know normally you have to pair it with something in that case he just dropped it right in the middle of the open field and won the game yeah. but generally speaking it's you know something tactical now this map's funny ed what do we know about this map uh, it's a nice map. It's a uh, strategic map uh, in most cases, right? Uh, both players kind of, uh, well, usually both players kind of stay in their area here. Uh, Marco already pushing through, sending some Connies over and garrisoning some of the uh, buildings on Kian's side, which is really nice. Uh, in most cases, people just really have like no vision on the other side. Uh, but right here, you see even Kian has a couple of Connies on the right side. Uh, uh -huh. Two of them do die, but he's not garrisoning. That's Marco being one step of Kian every single match basically except the last one uh but yeah uh 
uh, Connie's AFK. He should be garrisoning some of those buildings as well. Now he's going to go in. Uh, and these are important things, right? Because you're getting vision. I think in, in maps like this, vision is very important. And yeah. Marco has good good vision now on his side. Yeah, that's one time. That's one thing that like I think it's so easy to forget when you watch from a, a spectator point of view all the time. These guys obviously start with a completely black map, but they have to scout it, and that's yeah, like you said, taking the buildings can be really annoying, harassing harvesters as you can see here and stuff like that. Um, you know, all of a sudden now your reinforcements are driving past. I think there's probably a drone in that. Oh, drone! Mm. Does he get a miner? Yeah, miner gets drone. But yeah. yeah, to get to be able to get a feel for what's going on, on the other side of the map, a map like this, very easily a player could anti-scout, you'd be completely blind. I don't think Kian actually got any scout in Marco's base. Kian got that conscript up, and then again we just saw Kian. It's like Kian, it's like Kian only took the first half of the master class from from how to how to beat the goat. Like he like <laughs> sent the conscript up here, he won the foot race, but then he let Marco take that building top right. And now and now you see yeah. these tanks driving past these fortified buildings, taking a lot of chip damage, and Kian just kinda a little bit uh, oh, but he does one two punch that yeah. miner, which got drone. Does get one miner. He's okay. Uh, he should be able to click down that tank. He's getting good value here. He is, yeah, yeah. Going to, uh, there. Uh, Kian did get drone, so he is a little broke. So there's not really much follow up here, but oh, it he does kind of stop oh, he's a little loot. bit here. Goes right past those those huts, and that's what's so hard. You know, a lot of times, you know, when you're attacking like this, you can be smashing the T key, pulling your reinforcements, waypointing, whatever the case. On a map like this, like you have to babysit all of your reinforcements to the front lines, or they're going to run past these buildings and, and take quite a bit of chip damage, which actually happened to Keen on the way there and the way back. And it's just not what you're looking for. Very early desolator from oh Marco, and now a battle lab as well. Keen over to radar tech, but just yeah. so Keen trying to go tech as well, but just behind. Yeah, despite getting that uh, minor snipe, uh, Kian, Kian is finding himself a little far behind here, especially on, on a race. This is literally a race, right? When you're playing this map, it's like, who can get to the IC first and the Kirov first, right? The Kirov plays a big, important role as well. Uh, and ahead, look how far ahead. The IC is already ready, right? Uh, Kian just put his battle lab down. He still needs his nuke reactor and to build his IC. And even then, he's still struggling with his eco. He's like hitting broke over and over and over. Yeah, this is um I, I don't know. This is just this just seems odd to me. Like uh Kian I mean Kian's just been playing every day. Like normally when Kian's in grind mode, you know, Red Alert 2, I guess it would be I guess it is fun like that. Cause it's so tempting to think like like if it was always like we always knew who was gonna win, obviously that'd be less fun. Um, we've all seen Kian has beat Marco in these like we've had we've seen matches where Kian looks OP to Marco. That's what's so crazy, because right now it's like Marco's running circles around Kian. Um, and in a month from now, it could be the other way around. It's just so crazy how unpredictable it can be. Not looking good. Yeah, it definitely, it definitely is hit or miss. Sometimes you wake up in that mood, you wake up in that zone, and you're just clicking everything accurate, so yep. nice, not missing a beat. And then there's times where you're just sluggish. You know, even though you're playing okay, but you're playing against the god. Uh, goat then you're yeah. gonna be making mistakes that's for sure hey, either you making them or he's forcing you to make them yeah uh, but here we have a uh, ic ready uh hero from marco is asleep uh he's not moving it just yet he is trying to kill the bunkers there uh he's already in kian's side though oh yeah if kian slowed. has the ic it's gonna be slowed now oh, kian does goes... have two nuke reactors good you know oh yeah he does a double nuke reactor okay so so kian still has power so he double nuclear reactor that was actually a nice map awareness but no tanks left. Kirov, the Kirov goes AFK. Marco doesn't even need it right now. Uh, I see, but it's like he's got one Rhino right now. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, nice, nice, nice. He has two nuclear. Where's your tanks? <laughs> Where's your backup? I <laughs> love the nuclear reactor, Ed. I love the double nuclear reactor. I'm a huge fan of the double nuclear reactor. He brought the flak over. He had two drones, but Marco just sat behind his garrisoned or on uh, Kian's side. So it's like Kian can't, couldn't do anything with his drones to try to prevent it from happening. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, that hurts a lot, man. He, that uh, flag drone comes in, drones the miner, and just completely puts uh, Kian behind. Even though Kian did get that snipe back, how did Marco not fall behind at all, right? He didn't miss a beat. He he had three tanks in his base. They snapped that miner, and still somehow he's like, yeah, just shake it off, shrug it off. I'm so good. I still have IC, <laughs> blah, blah, blah. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> Yeah, I, it just it's what it does kind of seem like I, and that's why I think when people say like like sometimes Marco, you know, we've seen Marco lose people are like, oh, I thought Marco was the goat. It's like the reason Marco's the goat is because if Marco plays normal, he's almost on. He's basically unbeatable. That's Marco's normal for Kian to beat Marco. Kian has to go be in a full grind and then grind for a month. And then that day 
like B and beast mode. Like both those things have to align. You have to grind and the stars have to align. For Marco, it's like, if you're not having a bad day, you're very difficult to beat. And you know, with so many other players, it's like, if you're having a good day, you're hard to beat. Um, and that level of consistency is what we're really talking about with Marco. Cause it's not like, yeah, yeah. it's not like Marco's like doing anything insane. This is like Marco just like doing his thing. <laughs> and it's like, <laughs> yeah. oh my gosh. <laughs> well, Ivor, uh, you're gonna have to buckle your seatbelt here. Uh, Tiger Bay usually produces some nice quality games here. So from the get-go, we see drones coming out. We have uh, tanks coming out. No, no uh, multi-minor shenanigans from the War Factory. Both uh, one of them droned. Uh, Mr. Kian is droned on the bottom side. So to, I think he was forced to cancel maybe a refinery there to build that depot. I want to say, yeah. Look at top side. Uh, Marco already placed yeah. his third refinery and. Kian on two two refi or two miners now. Oh my so gosh, he's gonna lose he this mine. He, he, he just lost that he, mine. He repaired it. He repaired it. He repaired oh, he it. did. He did. He did. Oh my gosh, that was he's, quick. I was I, I got distracted by the pair drop. You know how much I love those. He's gonna try to run him out of the zone of the sentry gun. Doesn't quite get out of the zone. It could have at least beat him. And another sentry gun out. Defensive pair drop from Marco. Uh, yeah, so we got the service depot. Yeah, I'm a little bit surprised. You'd think at this point Kian would be working a service depot into his build. Um, so like Ed's saying there to you guys, like, you know, Kian was building another building, got drone, had to cancel the building, then build a service depot for you new players like that. It does throw off your build when that happens. A lot of players at the top level, if you're getting drone, um, they'll just have a service depot already worked into their build, so they don't have to do that. Uh, so it does get a minor there. Kian, a little bit of value, playing off the higher ground here, but needs to be careful. Fodder advantage for Marco. Tank advantage for Marco. Nice by Kian on oh. the bottom side. Oh. He gets a snipe on the Still making uh, Marco run around here. He has the uh, momentum right now. They're both on four miners. No, no uh, Kian all of a sudden a miner ahead. He did snipe that miner on the top side by the airport. So uh, again, this map, look, the, look he's yeah. just running around. It's pretty nice. So now uh, instead of following Kian, chasing Mark his tanks around, he's just going to send downfield and he's going to go toward Kian's base. Uh, so a little base trade going on now. Bit of a How base trade. With this? Kian, Kian already over to drones. So Kian already over to drones. Marco not over to drones. Marco loses his only war factory. Marco now not producing tanks. Does get quite a few conscripts oh. out of that. And Marco's heavily droned here. Kian should be able to hold That's this it. line. Marco heavily droned. Kian should be able to take this one. Yeah. No yeah, war, factory. war factory down. Yep. MCV is about to go down. Yep. Yeah. Well man. played. Well played. Ah oh, man, that looked rough for Kian. I was about to say, God damn, another game. Really? He's so far behind again. With the sub, thanks, buddy. Appreciate it. Uh, Poirier gifted sub to Quas. Quas, you're a sub now. Yes, the death robot's a sub. That's what we all needed. Remember, you subs, you guys wield tremendous power. If three of you use a single emote in a row, uh, something amazing happens. Quas said Quas said he was going to be gone. Quas said he was going to be gone till September, but I've seen Quas lurking around. I'm getting excited. Quas, though, he, you can't like corner him. You can't just like message Quas a bunch and be like, "Hey, come play, come play." He gets he's skittish. So you gotta kind of like, you gotta kind of be like elusive, you know, like you see him around. It's very, it's very tricky getting Quas to play games. There's a whole art to it, but I think Quas is back. I think Quas might be back. I'm excited. Dude, if, if uh, you want to question whether he's back or not, he was quick matching. Uh, he has, he has 56 wins in the last 24 hours. He <laughs> yes. has the, the, the record right now. Uh, you know, how they player the player of the match, player of the month, whatever yeah. it is, player of the day. 56, dude, come on, that's a shitload of games. Oh my gosh, uh, I love that. Yeah, I don't follow the QM stats very well, that's good to know. So Quas is back, he's in grind mode, he's back two months early because he missed us so much. You love to see it, man, there's just not that many people like, um, I was talking about with you, Ed, right? I mean like the pro, it's like the pro and then like super pro. And it's like these guys, <laughs> the Latov, Key and Marco, Legend, and Quas, there's so few people really in that like top top. And when Quas goes away for a couple months, we all suffer. I need him to quit his job and abandon his family and commit to Red Alert 2, we'll see. We'll see. Stop hurting my feelings, goddammit. <laughs> <laughs> Ed, you're a pro. You're just, you're not quite taking down Marco. You're not Stop quite. It. You, you have to hype me up. You'd be like, no, you're better than Marco. We just gotta work on some things, all right? <laughs> you need the encouragement. Yeah, of course you're not yes. gonna take down Marco without my without with me talking down on you like this. Come on. <laughs> exactly, man. My confidence just goes down. Now when I play them, all I think is Ivor telling me I suck. Damn it. <laughs> Good enough for these guys. Damn it. I want to be as good as them, but Ivor just keeps shooting me down. No, no. Ed versus so, Marco, BO99. No, 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 no. Just kidding. Just kidding. No, no, no. <laughs>
<laughs> yeah, you, you can't have it both uh, ways, man. <laughs> I just kid. I just kid. I'm from a distance. <laughs> yeah, I'm from a distance. Or super early Kirov here from Mar. Oh wow. Oh, simultaneous Kirovs over to Battle Lab Tech for both players now. Uh, both Kirovs gonna give exchange high fives as they cross the bay here. Now Kian double naval yard. Kian more mo more money in the bank. Marco going broke for a moment. Looks like. Uh, Ooh, Kian, he has the Dread out as dread, well on the bottom side dread, here. Dread top from... Oh, and the flat cannon's already there from Kian. Kian already has a flat cannon to try to hold... Oh, my God. This is an oil. Where did the this flat... Is, this is going crazy. A single flat cannon can't counter a Dreadnought? Come on, boys. I think so. I think it might have taken that first shot out first, though. Uh, usually, it does counter oh, it, though. Oil's going down, and, and he does not... Oh, those flats are going to go down. Those the flags are going to go down. Oh, oh no. And the now refinery the refinery goes down. The flags go down. The... Oh my god, what is going on right now? Marco is all over Kian right now. Literally takes out every one oh of his my oils god. on the right side there. Hero of Andred takes out the refinery as well. Uh, damn. And, and on the is... bottom side, nothing. No value for Kian. Did Kian, yeah. Oh, Kian's Kirov got a couple oils on the left side, but I don't think Kian's Dreadnought got anything. Uh, Kian does end up squitting uh, Kian's, but he calls GG's, loses that whole middle expansion. Um, yeah, he really needed this one. This is a best of nine. That means it's the first to five. Uh, that Mayday map is uh, heavily favored toward Marco, uh, but that would have put him at 3-3. And not only that, you would have taken a map from Marco, right? One of his back pocket maps. This is one of them, dude. He's really strong on Mayday. <laughs> and you can see why. He's on some of those. So, yeah, I'm excited yeah. to play those out as well. It's all about the maps, man. It's all about the maps. Yeah, I mean, the difference between my two 2v... The first 2v2 I did where I just used all the pools and we saw some of those big kind of lame maps, and the second time when I consulted you and we got, like, the tighter maps where you really see the crazy action, uh, it was a night and day difference. The maps are everything right now, and there's so many talented players pouring blood, sweat, and tears into the maps, both in 1v1 and 2v2, and that's really how the game's evolving right now. Uh, Lloyd, you asking about Blitz? No, I think um, I, I'm still... Uh, I still, I still really like, I, li I really like, I like, honestly, I used to think like my whole thing was like, oh, we have to solidify the game modes. We have to find one game mode and get everyone on one or like make one hybrid mode. And now I'm kind of like, man, I like, I like the different things. I like the different things. I will say, uh, Yuri's Revenge is, is my, is my bona fide third favorite right now. Like, uh, Yuri's Revenge, it's too, the slow, the slowness, the, the build, the teching yeah. up, the slower tanks. I just, it just is not, not scratching the itch for me. Uh, but that could change, you know, like, like all of a sudden when you're doing mixed factions, you know, stuff like that, good players. But the problem is Yuri's Revenge, two bad players or a slow game. I, I can't, you know, I just completely glaze over. RA2, the run and gun style, both 1v1. I'm a fan of, but the RA2, 2v2 right now is, is really what's, I think, kind of like, it just happens to be what I'm, you know, excited about right now. But, but Blitz is obviously I'm always gonna be a big fan of Blitz, and I think Blitz is fun. I really like what Blitz does for lower division players. The fact that like that at any skill level, if you get two players that are close in skill, I can have fun watching uh, watching Blitz. But it's a little bit tough at the top level in Blitz right now. A lot of like the really top level guys don't play a lot of Blitz, so we're not getting great games at the very top level right now. So. Eh, it's just a little bit tricky, but we'll see. Honestly, my, you know, my stuff changes week to week, day to day. Uh, as, so, so far here, Marco got drone. Did Kian get... No, Kian didn't get drone? Not yet. <laughs> Kian there is drone? a drone running around. Uh, it's coming toward the center. Uh, if, if Marco decides to drone, he obviously needs to choose one of the uh, right side miners, right? There's a service depot already pre-captured or captured on the left side, so no point in... Oh, he does try, but Kian uh, does uh, target it, moves his miners toward it, does snipe that drone off. So a little advantage to, oh no, oh I was going to say that Marco uh, Miner on the bottom right was headed down to the uh, bottom left, the refinery actually finally comes down, he brings it back, oh it's going to be a long distance mining one. So three miners, six miners now for Marco, six miners for Kian, Kian on two war factories though, uh, both of them on two war factories, so basically identical at the moment here. Yeah, interesting, interesting. Yeah, so what we'll have to yeah, Kian Kian two four. Well, I mean this is it. If Kian can't win, well, I mean, this is it. Kian goes home if he loses this. See if Kian feels it here. Uh, if he's the kind of kid who bends or breaks. I got seven. He's got he's got such a man, he's just been playing so much lately. I'm surprised to see, but this what a best of nine gives you a little bit more time to get warmed up. But obviously getting down to four two is not where you want to be. Now no room for mistakes from Kian. Uh Kian bringing all his tanks to bottom right. Oh, he is gonna bring two two tanks down the middle. Oh, he could. I'd like, to see, here. I'd like yeah. to see Kian continue he, to dangle on the right side and force, because these two tanks are, are could be able to... Yeah, oh, no, two tanks already from Marco to respond. 
Yeah, he's going to keep doing this. I think he ha he does have a little tank advantage. He was able to get that third war factory down before Marcos did. So he maybe pumped a couple extra rhinos there. He's trying to uh, abuse that little tank. And honestly, I love uh, Kian's build here. Four war factories now for him. And he's stretching toward those gems there on the right side. Uh, that's going to be huge once he can get, if he can get established there with those gems, right? Yeah, yeah. It's uh, gonna, he, it's... He's... Kian? Yeah, I think oh. Kian in a pretty good position here. Nice, repositioning his fodder there. Beautiful yep. play there, beautiful play there. Puts his fodder right in front of his tanks, goes all the way in here. He does t out tank here. He can actually turn around and just take that fight, but he keeps running away. Uh, he will turn around now, finally. Uh, yeah. He does take that fight. Meanwhile, on the right side, it uh, looks like uh, Marco's not pushing in. Nothing's happening on there. Uh, yeah, it would have been a like lot worse for Marco. Kian could have hopped. Kian actually could have, he could have turned back. He could have hopped up on that cliff before turning around. Maybe got a couple extra shots in too, but you're right. Yeah, he could have turned around a little bit earlier there. But then the sentry gun came from Marco, so got out of the zone. Just continuing to dangle on the right side. Marco now with two sentry guns and com uh, combined with the miners in that fight would be tough for Kian to push into. Kian now going broke for the moment. Uh, not where he wants to be, but now just this is, this is, now this miner on these gems, this is, this is perfect timing for this. Now you see Marco going broke as well, but look at that, what that difference is. He gets another refinery on those gems as well, and that economy he pushes exactly what he needs and the aggressor in this position pushing again into the same zone going up the ramp again and on Very the right nice side here yeah same kind of attack again still gonna get value hops up on that cliff gets some shots in marco dropping sentry guns kian now pushing on the right side you see him kind of working around outside of these sentry guns no fodder for kian on the right side or the left side but um yeah he's gonna lose his, his army on the left side but he's done a pretty good job getting value over there yeah, he keeps uh, sniping miners, which is really nice, and uh, keeping Marco kind of uh, on uh, in his own little corner, right, in his own little base right now. Marco trying to do something here in the center, trying to push forward. He does out-tank here in this battle here, but he leaves his right side fully exposed. Uh, Kian uh, does realize this. Uh, looks like he's going to go in and regroup here. No miners are... Oh, he was going to send the miners back, but he does get them back onto the ore now. So, Kian, eight, my, Kian, I, 9k right now, 9k for Kian. I'd like to see this barracks just go non stop, just rack 30 dogs. You know, fodder, a fodder advantage in each of these groups could be really nice. There's no Desos on the field yet. And Marco, Marco sell? Did Marco sell? How long ago did Marco sell? He's on five war factories. He sells his war uh, okay, so. MCV. This is, he has like maybe two minutes oh. to play around with this yep and he does he does get keen out of position top side he goes at he gets one miner one miner on the top side oh he didn't even get that miner he didn't get yeah. that miner on one tick and Kian, and so now Kian up an MCV. Kian has 9K, and Kian moving his MCV. Kian can slow play this if he wants. Uh, Marco being down MCV. If Kian can get in, snipe a miner, snipe a war factory, he could slow this game down. MCV now naked up the middle. Uh, Marco gets there with a four tank split. Marco, of course, uh, the miner hunter, doesn't even care about the MCV. Gets one miner, gets two miner. Kian over to drones now on the back end. Um, now preparing a split on the attack here. Uh, gonna push in. Yeah, he's uh, yep. he's out tanking yep. Marco really hard here. Yep. Uh, I don't know Love if Marco this can do much. Backside split. Marco sells a war factory. Marco's going broke. And Kian, you talked about that stretch over to those gems and how decisive that was once he got there. Um, you know, he was already in the driver's seat, but then all of a sudden catapults himself ahead uh, with that massive economy boost into the mid game. Yeah, that was nice. All right, guys, real quick. So you may have already seen this game. I posted it a few days ago on my YouTube as well. If you've already seen it, you can skip ahead to the timestamp above. That'll bring you to the next match, or you can rewatch this game because... Well, as you guys already know, it is absolutely insane. Allied versus Soviet in regular Red Alert 2 is really is really doing it for me right now. I'm a, I'm a big fan of it. And uh, so we're going to do this tournament. Everyone's going to do everyone's going to play both. We got a very small map pool so you can try to learn Allied and Soviet on both should be pretty comfortable. Um, I'm excited to see it, though. Allied versus Soviet regular Red Alert 2. I'm a I'm, I'm a fan of that right now. Uh, so Fjord, now this map, uh, this map gets a little interesting. Uh, I feel like normally I'm seeing AVS on this. With Soviet versus Soviet, are you are you still likely to see the MCV move over to the island, Ed? Yeah, yeah. Uh, eventually, you're gonna have to move out there, right? Uh, it's so it's huge value out there, and <laughs> so yeah. many gems and everything. Uh, to begin though, uh, opening here, Kien's coming in with the flag, trying to get, capture this uh, center thing. But Marco's already there with the drone. He's gonna counter this flag. Is he gonna get there in time? Ooh. He does not want to. Oh, he does. Oh, oh, but the engineer comes out the wrong side. That's got to hurt. He placed that flag perfectly. It was perfect. 
usually usually it deploys on the back side of the flag yep. for some reason that engineer is like nah i'm gonna i'm gonna get out the driver's seat he, came, he crawled the over side. the driver came out the driver's <laughs> side and that was um yeah that's one of those ones that's that's so interesting right so basically there as soon as the drone goes in then there's that moment that window of opportunity for the engineer to get into the airport right so you saw marco was was forcing his drone to not go in but then Kian started shooting the drone so then marco went in yeah little dances like that man i think that's why um you know, I think that's with this game too, you know, we have so many, such a massive amount of the viewers for this game right now don't play at the top level. And so little stuff like that, it's so tempting, you just miss it. You're like, oh, okay, he got the engineer. But if you watch both of their point of view side by side, that was like this incredible combination of like, of tact and wit. And uh, those are the kind of things I'm slowly getting more and more used to because I'm not a competitive player. So a lot of those things kind of get lost on me. But um, yeah, the more I watch this game, man, the more it just kind of starts to evolve and evolve more and more. And you start to really appreciate the uh, the nuanced little arts to it. Battle Lab and now yeah. for Marco. Kian in the water first. Kian gets his MCV over to the island. Really nice here for Kian. He's going to... Uh, and dude, that that little Hello, play that friends. we just talked about, uh, this is one of those things that I've mentioned before, right? Like uh, Red Alert 2. Uh, I mean, it's not completely luck based, but there's a lot of luck involved in this game, right? Sometimes just units yeah. don't work as they're intended to, or how they normally do. You know, like uh, so for someone like Woody who ends up just undefeated basically right it's just so weird to see because especially in chinese servers right where they play with ng's multi uh engineers on or even like uh, ng eating on right where if you send one dog one dog could maybe maybe kill 10 dogs right yeah <laughs> it's it just so unheard of right but they play like that and woody wins all the fucking time and i just don't get it you know yeah. like you saw there he, had, <laughs> he had technically played it perfectly right he was patient he was composed he's like all right i got the drone it's fine i'm positioned perfectly once the drone gets into my flag i deploy i capture easy right nope just kidding here's a little <laughs> twist we're not gonna do it the way it's intended no way yeah and uh, it really yeah, i mean so. that's really what it was that engineer coming out the side there oh, oh he had the drone oh but the drone goes in the amphibious transport. Oh, oh that would have been sick. That would have been so sick. So Kian comes over the amphibious transport with his drone, and you guys saw there. So a couple of you guys in the chat saying Marco teching up first, isn't that a better move? Kian was able to get his MCV over, then use that same amphibious transport to bring up a drone. He knew he was going to be ahead of Marco because he knew Marco would be teching up. And again, another one of those ones where uh, nice move from Kian couldn't have done it that much better, but. You know, uh, yeah, the little bit of the randomness involved. I mean, that's what you're talking about. You know, some games have those factors, some games don't, right? Chess, there's no luck involved. Yeah. It's the game itself. There's no blind, uh, you know, blind potential things to happen. Red Alert 2, old games like this, random shit happens sometimes. In that case, I guess he could have microed the drone better, but it just sucks. You got to do nine things right, and then you got to, you know, win the coin toss. Iron Curtain now for Marco Kian on the run. Yeah, a nice exchange here actually for Kian. I think Kian comes out ahead on this one here, though. Even though Marco's pushing him back, he was able to kind of nullify his uh, his IC, right? The IC is so devastating, especially having it first. Uh, but now Marco forces to go back. Kian's now the yeah. next one uh, next one up with his IC, and he only lost his airport there, a few tanks as well. But He's uh, can, can he get good value? He's going to have to get some really crazy value here. Yeah, he is behind on tanks. So Marco just, and, and Kian goes, Kian right into it. Oh, oh, and Marco gets some tanks. Oh, Marco gets a bunch of tanks strung around that little lake. And that's nice value. And he has a nice IC. Only one tank not IC'd at the moment. That Desolator goes down. Now into more Desolators. Ooh, Kian needs to be careful here. That Desolator. Oh, that was good timing. Yeah, yeah that Desolator. That IC was going yeah. down. Nice Desolator from Marco. The favor. Really nice, actually. Yeah. And we talk about like, oh man, uh, who's going to win? You know, oh, well, it depends on where the wind's blowing, right? Uh, in this case, Kian. In another, in a different day, he would have captured that airport. He would have droned the MCV. You know what I right. mean? Right. Like, oh yeah, drone the dead. MCV, captured. Then Marco would have quit. You know. You but like you said dead. though, that's why it's interesting that Woody and Marco, these guys who dominate, because at the end of the day, yeah, the random stuff happens. And obviously, go read the Discord. Everyone uses the excuses. But at the end of the day, it ha the random stuff happens to everybody. You got to be the player who can play through it. You know. Uh, For sure. Nice. And here we go. Marco's second attack. All the war factories he's... are kind of next to each other, so Marco can get huge oh, value oh, here. Oh, maybe overcommits oh. a little. 
He does. He overcommits. Oh. Kian cleans up the army and he saves that war factory, which is huge right now. Kian on two war factories. Oh, but Marco has the Desos to protect the retreat. And now Kirov coming to get some more offensive value, heading towards the island here. Kian's turn to use the IC. What can he get done? These Desolators causing a lot of issues. Kian now bringing drones to the front lines to try to clear those Desolators out. He knows he has to try to get some offensive value. He's done a good job of defending and staying alive, but at the end of the day, he's got to try to get some offensive here. Only gets half those tanks. The other one's on a lot of radiation. Pushing across. Not a big fan of his IC there. I kind of wish he would have just IC'd the drones. He has leftover drones in the backside there too. I mean, this this push is still strong. The Don't push. get me wrong. But oh, it's that sentry gun. Right? And you saw, and Kian was switching off the sentry gun. You saw his tanks were targeting, then he was switching off. So the flak yeah. boats will take out the Kirov. Kirov goes AFK, flak boats to counter the Kirov. That's nice. So he didn't have to go flak tracks, so he doesn't disrupt his Rhino build. Marco now using the tech depot to repair his tank, which I find uh, to be adorable mm. and also very frugal. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Drones over he, now. Uh, Kian had like five, six <sighs> drones there. He could have just ic the drones, yeah. had all his tanks un unhurt, uninjured, right, untouched. Just send the drones in. It would have cleaned up Marco's Rhinos and the Desos, and then follow up with your Rhinos afterwards, right? Uh, but he decides to go with the Rhinos there. A little impatient there, in my opinion. Uh, but yeah. now it's uh, Marco's turn. It looks like they're just uh, taking turns. Taking, taking turns trading value. ICs, yeah. And, and oh, and Kian's Miner now pushing. Oh, okay, he's going to pull that Miner back now. Deso. Oh, Deso. Oh, that's a nice Deso. It's going to get some good chip damage. He'll lose a Miner here. But ooh, those Rhinos just took a lot of chip damage. Yeah, and now Marco actually pretty far ahead here. This is kind of where you want to be when you click your IC yeah. in your opponent's face, right? Uh, so he's oh, literally his tanks get strung up. His tank's getting uh, a straight line, ret hard retreat. Oh, Kian is going to save. Qu and Marco does chase down the... Oh, he split. He puts one tank back to take that War Factory. And gets an elite. And gets an elite out of it. Very nice. Did he grab the vet? I wonder if he grabbed a vet for that job. That would have been sick. That would have been nice. That would have been a heads up play. And Marco already in the center here, getting a little, another little batch of gems. Do we have any dreads out in the field? No, no dreads, no sneaky little uh, backdoor. They must. Uh, yeah, they must have a lot of squids in the water right now, maybe or something. I mean, they're both on 14k, 9k, a lot of money. Crazy, crazy match point here. Kian fighting to stay alive, fighting to give us a barn burner. And Kian, it's one of those ones where Kian, like obviously we're all like, come on, you know, Kian, make it happen. But the problem is he hasn't even got on Marco's side of the map, right? So yeah. done a lot of things right, but ultimately not much offensive value. No, he needs to get a, a nice IC drone usage before Marco's IC is ready. Uh, I think that's his only way to come back here because the trading of... Uh, favors Marco since Marco keeps having to you he keeps using his IC in Kian's base yeah uh, oh now oh. finally uh, Marco oh. still has eight seconds he came in a little oh. too soon Marco came too he early came in a little too soon there Kian cleans oh, up no. and Kian now has the cure off behind two flat cannons out oh but now Marco oh, uses oh no Kian <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. what is going on here oh uh, the IC dance Kian's got a lot of tanks though what uh how what will Marco be able to get done here oh my Marco pulls back the cure off doing work Kirov doing work. Kirov is yeah, and you doing saw work. He does. Marco went Dreadnought got immediately there. squitted. Yeah, so they're just camping each other's naval yards. So no Dreadnought's getting anything done today. Now, Marco's miners. Marco now pushing in uh, Desolators into this front zone. Kian has an elite in this group. Kian has a nice tank advantage, but has to give a lot of respect to these Desolators and these choke points. A little bit annoying. Kian probably needs to get a couple drones out to try to deal with these. Uh, but you see, yeah. Man. <laughs> Uh, well, Kian does have the elite this time, and he has the IC uh, pretty soon now. Uh, the ICs are kind of getting close. Oh, Marco accidentally deploys. Marco. He moves his tanks. He accidentally deploys there. Oh, the desolators. Oh, no. The de oh, the, that, that elite that is elite. melting. That elite was melting those desolators. Now, both players have desolators. Oh, careful. Careful, Kian. Both players taking some chip damage. You know it would be nice, Ed, if I had, when we reprogram the tanks to only smoke at a certain health, and then we would know who has damaged tanks right now. A lot of desolators. <laughs> yeah, that... A lot of desolators. And Dreadnought. I don't know draw. Why, why are we seeing IC drones? They'd be so key right now. The IC drones uh, seem but... really obvious. Uh, it seems odd. Now, there is a... The flat cannon somehow got past the squids. Uh-oh. Sneaky, sneaky Dreadnought left side. Oh, it gets squidded. Damn. Oh, it does get squidded. Yeah, the IC drones... Oh, he ICs the, the Dreadnought! He ICs the Dreadnought! Oh, huge, huge, huge. He's, is he going to kill the IC? The flat Will cannon... kill the IC? I, the flat cannon's holding, though. It's all, oh, it's only shooting one rocket, Ed. Only one rocket. One rocket's going off the map. Did you see oh, that? Oh, no. One rocket uh, another, was going off the another map. Luck, another unlucky situation yeah. this game, man. I'm telling you. Well, now the luck's going in Kian's favor. Kian, Kian was due for some luck. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Uh, oh, so my God. The are finally coming out here, and Kian has... Uh, 
he has a long time before uh, Marco's new IC comes. So if he gets these drones into these miners slash tanks, uh, it's going to hurt Marco really hard. But Marco already knows. Look at this. He's sending his tanks all the way, all the way back, literally to the entire side. Uh, oh, nice heads up play here by Kian. Send some, well, send a little, a little too many drones there to deal with those desolators. He's trying to bait the desolators out, sending one tank to, uh, to bait the sentry guns into it, kills the desolators, but it's not working out for him. Yeah, then he's good. really, really good defense here. Holy shit. Yeah, you know what's funny? When you look at this map on paper, this is how you expect every game to play. Like you have, you know, this. Look at this choke point. Now it does use IC drones. But there's that forward. Oh, he gets, he's going to get, I think he just got four. He got four miners. They're all going to get, will they all get on the service depot? Kirov now coming. This is how you always expect this map to play because of this small choke point. But oftentimes you don't see it play like this. I'm a big fan of this map. Polye in the chat too. Polye OP map maker. We love your map, Polye. Oh, that, that was a great IC to be honest, yep. dude. Uh, look at Marco's eco right now. And he doesn't have the miners to come oh, back. Oh, Marco's if, broke. If, I was going to say, this. I thought he was going to be able to pump out from those forward barracks more desos. I didn't think that would get the job done. Marco going broke though. Marco has a ton of tanks. Key and, so Key enforces the amputation on that forward expansion, clears out the desos. Kirov getting some work done here. And Kian, well, Kian now only 2K in the bank. Players running out of ore on the map. But everyone's mining dirt. Everyone's mining dirt yeah. right now. Marco, oh, look, some nice, another nice chip damage there. Marco's mm. trying to inch his way toward the uh, right side bridge there. He had an uh, engineer there. He tried repairing it so he doesn't come in through this choke point. But uh, Kian oh. has a play there. Does kill the engineer on the right side there. Uh, and Marco's still forcing, trying to force himself into this little uh, choke point here. And Kian doing a great job, just like Marco was doing with the Desolator, preventing him to get in a good position to use his IC. So these Desolators are key. Oh, here's the return. IC drones. So, so yeah, so he... <laughs> Is that the move to just stop and gum him up right there? Uh, doesn't he could? Oh, he I see. Oh, he I sees. Interesting. Will he get much value out of this? Let's see. Oh, he's not gonna get the value he probably wanted there. Trades he a probably few. tried kind of. Uh, he tried washing the the uh, the I sees kind of in a little bit. Yeah. He does have to take the back. No forward deso. That forward barracks causing a lot of issues here for Marco and gets another desolator out right before it goes down. Very nice. Kian doing a good job dancing away from his own radiation here. Uh, and Kian sells. Kian sells. Marco. Oh, Marco stole an MCV. Both players. Oh, that means no sentry guns anymore. So he can't be. Uh securing that choke point with the desolators that well anymore since the sentry guns are no longer available to build for Kian here. Tough, tough, tough. I see is going to be ready for Marco here first, uh, but they're pretty close uh, pretty close in time. Kian does have the desolators to push him back. Kian, uh, both Kian. of them dead broke still. <laughs> and Kian, Kian is behind on tanks. He needs to try to find... Oh, but he, oh. he, he, he deploys Oops. TTs and gets one that was, supposed, that was actually on his retreat. Oh, he, but he stays yeah. right off of it. Wow, this is delicate. This is a delicate situation here. I see drones going to cause... Three... Three IC drones, uh, tank. You can probably kill those off here. Oh, uh, a little that does. tough. Yeah, so now the IC is in Kian's favor. Uh, what does Kian do here? How much value can he get? And the Desolator is still coming out here, trying to keep the, oh, that was oh. huge. That was oh, he nice got hit. that Desolator. Now two barracks though. Will another Desolator comes out? It does. Oh, oh. he gets another one. He, he, kills, he kills that Desolator. <laughs> That, that means he can inch his way closer oh. and closer. The more Desos he kills, the better it is for oh. him. And he goes all the way into Marco's <laughs> side now. All of a sudden, thinning out Marco's army that looked huge there for a second. Yep. And actually retreats. He doesn't want to overcommit because then that is literally GG. He might lose a couple tanks here in the retreat, that, but it's not going to be game-changing, right? That, he still yep. can defend this. That just put that might have just put Kian back in this game here. Now still down in MCV. Marco dead broke, not selling. What do you think, Ed? Would it would have a game like this where you know it's so knotted up? Is it would it have been viable for either of these players to go over to a nuke and get that free super weapon that just keeps <laughs> keeps giving value oh, dude, late game? Earlier they had well like. 13k each they yeah, yeah. definitely could have uh, built a nuke during those times but they use their money on desolators and sentry guns in the center battle yeah. just trying to prevent each other from coming in i see drones oh that's oh, a, oh that's gonna be hard oh gets oh, oh, oh god gets routed around that's the lake a huge i see that's a huge i see right there oh god he's trying to save his elite oh. he, he's trying to save his elite <laughs> Well, here we go. Mar uh, Marco did his IC, uh, did take out a lot of those Rhino tanks from uh, Kian, but now it's Kian's turn. So how much value can he get in return? Uh, 
Icy Thrones coming in again. Icy's ready, coming in. Here, let's go. Marco's running away pretty far. Does uh, Kian follow it up with anything, though? His tanks are yeah, the tanks are not out of position. Right I'd like to see. I'd like to see a little one two. You know, grab a radar at least, mess with him. Oh, that. But you know, where where is Kian's? Oh, Kian doesn't really have an army, I guess. <laughs> Kian's repairing oh, his tanks. Huge, dude. Oh. He left Marco with four tanks. Oh. Four tanks. Oh my gosh, these guys are just gonna IC drones until the world ends. Something's happening on the right side. There's an amphibious transport. I'm not too sure what it's taking on that side, though. But miners would be fucking ideal. There's a huge batch of he does. He takes the miners over there. He's oh my gosh, them off. He's, he's gonna, gonna put them He has to. He's gonna. He's gonna carry oh them home. God, I love it. I love it. Burner, boys. Okay, more drones coming. Oh my gosh, and Marco gets droned. <laughs> here we go. Uh, Mar uh, Kian needs to be very careful here. That's five IC drones coming in. He so, has the eight depot, and he's standing right next to the depot, so he can just repair them, get him out, repair them, get him oh, out, repair them, get him out. I didn't know. I didn't know you could repair uh, IC if they were IC. That's interesting. He, and he does save that elite. Kian doing such a good job babysitting that elite. Okay, now, oh, the miners aren't mining. Oh yeah, okay, because oh, they were full, right? So they They're went full, AFK. Okay, yeah. that's gonna be a nice little hit to the economy, Ed. It's gonna be huge, dude. It's huge. He has 4K right there in the bank. Marco two four six and this normally you guys I'm like a lot of tanks to a lot of tanks in this case you can practically count them two four seven two four almost even on tanks uh Kian Kian doing such a good job protecting that elite this is gonna be so big well watch Kian's money uh watch Kian's money here and that's gonna be exactly what he needs nice I see from Kian Marco look out Marco is so quick on the click man his retreats in that position it's like it, he, he it's almost a second early like he's almost predicting it yeah. you know I see he's gonna go down I see I see oh, goes look down at, at what cost, at what oh. cost does an elite survive as an elite? No, he stopped. The elite is stopped there for a second. Oh my gosh. And oh, Kian, Kian yeah, will hold. He does Kian, kill the IC, which is huge. That's dude. huge. That's huge. Marco, now Marco, oh, Marco's going to move his MCV over to the island. Marco moving his MCV, he's going to go to the island, I think. He might go to the other island. Although but there might not be many gems left by the time he gets there. Kian going back <laughs> for more gems. Insane. Kian now 2K in the bank. Dude, Kian's got this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Kian wins this. There, there's no way that uh, Kian can lose this anymore, right? He has no. IC. And next IC is going to come right again. Uh, he can continue doing these IC drones oh, oh, over and oh, over. There's a drone. There's a drone. He, he drones. He has drones on the island, so Marco can't go with the MCV. <laughs> Marco knew. Marco knew. He deploys his MCV yeah. like, or his amphibious transport. He's like, okay, IC. I mean, uh, MCV, you're not going over He there. doesn't have the IC. We're it's it's GG's. It? It's GG's. Yeah. And Kian's going to get another, another uh, bunch of money here. How much is it? How much is a full miner of gems? 2K. 2k uh, yeah. war uh war miner or yeah yeah uh, it's 2k Kian about to get and, and marco now marco marco has four tanks now stuck on the island marco calls ggs <laughs> <laughs> let's fucking oh, go boys what a game gosh oh my gosh all right boys it's happening we are officially burning barns. It is 4-4. I don't know how Kian made this happen because he's been kind of getting his ass kicked all day, to be honest. But we're officially burning barns, boys. This is the Red Alert 2 Pro Finals. Uh, quick reminder, RedAlert2.com is the place to be if you want to download and play the game. You want to join the tournaments. we got tournaments every month. Brand new players, even if you don't remember how to play. we got a division for you. Come join the fun. The YouTube, the highlights. Every few days, I po post only the cream of the crop over on YouTube. Um, on Twitch, you guys catch it live. You catch the good games, you catch the bad games. YouTube's only the good stuff, so it's a good combination. Catch it live, see the behind the scenes, and then catch the highlights. Um, but yeah, YouTube, Twitch, and of course, you can donate. All the money that comes in does go back into the stream. Helps me create more content. All the money, all the love and support, liking, commenting, sharing, all that stuff's free for you guys. Helps me get this in front of more people. More people watching, playing, and streaming Red Alert 2. That is the mission around here. And I got to say it real quick because I'm excited about it. The comic book. The comic book's out. I made a Red Alert 2 comic book, War Torn Lovers. It's the story of Yuri and Tanya. They're in love. They have to take down the whole world who's going against them. Uh, I highly recommend it. It's, it's actually, well, it's free. You just have to pay for shipping. It's like 10 bucks. RA2themoon.com. You can buy the comic book. Uh, again, and then buy a hundred of them, put them everywhere, and then people will see the comic book. They'll be like, oh my god, I remember Red Alert 2. They come over, Red Bull sponsors us, million dollars, all right to the moon. Okay, Ed, here we go. Marco's map pick. Does Kian have the momentum? Who's the map favorite? Ed, tell us everything. Uh, you gotta give the map favored to Marco, but the position favored to Kian right here. Top right is actually ah. really nice here. Uh, you can go from the top right to the top left, technically, on the left side there. 
so so easily right and you get two expansions there really nicely if you go build off the oil that's also also really nice but i feel like that's a more vulnerable position uh, on the top side you have to stretch toward uh, from your oil right uh and that usually is where it gets a little tricky if this kian guy goes to the top side now you gotta fight for that little ore patch that marco's gonna be trying to grind oh right? yeah so, so this preventing it interesting yeah. yeah a little bit contested there and you guys saw there kian looking a little bit quicker on the click so we talked about that in his one game in order to build the service depot he had to cancel one of his buildings to put him behind if you guys saw that there kian got droned as he got droned he was already moving his miner he already had the service depot down so it didn't throw off his build order as much um yeah he at this point kian's like i'm gonna get droned so definitely playing a little bit faster and kian man you gotta love the tenacity to pull himself back in this one i mean to be just to be getting kicked around uh in a series like this um it's so difficult difficult mentally to stay in it to stay focused and then after that last game man those ones really uh really really wear you down oh, oh yeah. ooh, ooh, ooh. Dude, <laughs> as i say this as i say the strat that is usually really nice to do here uh marco already ahead of the game right he has a drone there just sitting there waiting he's like you want to move your mcv good luck you know, I'm here waiting with this drone. He already brought his tanks. It's all about uh, positioning, right? Yep. You got to position yourself in the right places to prevent whatever it is that you're trying to do. And right now, he's he's taking the the battle up here because he doesn't want to lose this position. It's key. It's key. You don't want uh, Kian to bring his MCV this way. Yeah, and both the players knowing it. It's it's such an interesting thing. Like the player and Kian, I think Kian's gonna go for it anyway. Kian pushes into that oh, drone. Kian does. has a fodder advantage here. Marco might be up a couple tanks here, but Kian with a little bit of fodder advantage, few dogs in this fight. And Marco needs to be careful. Marco's going broke, so Marco can't bring fodder or sentry gun support in this position. Of course, Kian doesn't know Marco's broke right now, but Marco with 2k in the bank is very nice. And now the MCV move here, and it all comes down to this, boys. And Marco, now Marco's catching up on money as his on oh, Marco sells. Marco sells. And that's ah, where Marco's dude, money came no from. He needed it there. He needed to sell there. Yeah. Because he needs to bring these For dogs sure. in. Sure. Needs the now key in the forward barracks. Now, if Kian can keep money in the bank, this barracks can be so nice. Marco doesn't have a forward barracks, so look how far his fodder is having to run. And Marco, but Marco 2k in the bank. Kian goes broke. Kian now the one on, on defense with no sentry gun support does get one sentry gun out though. And Marco with a big fodder advantage. Kian clicking down those tanks though. Big engagement here. Kian pulls back to the sentry gun. Sentry gun goes down. No fodder for either player. Dogs now from Marco to the front line. The barracks goes down. The MCV oh. sells, but he loses that forward barracks without getting any fodder into the fight. Doesn't get the value out of it. Kian now pulls the miners into, into the, the fight miners. as fodder definitely needed them oh, definitely need nice those. pull beautiful miner pull there from kian oh 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 i oh, out the oh, tank right a little bit but it's gonna favor oh is it gonna favor dude oh this is such a close one here the vets oh, both shit. vets go down for both Marco players takes this oh no look at all the dogs that came out dude i oh. think that kian would have benefited from spamming connie's there in that situation he may have uh overestimated the fact that he could have just that held there he desperately tried to place that refinery but that as soon as he placed the refinery you saw he went broke no fodder came out of the barracks and marco just pushed in right there completely destroyed his expansion there and kian's oh, dogs man. and his other barracks uh, didn't join the fight and Kian quits out. Marco takes it home and uh, wow. Man. Ah, the MCV and, and that's man Ed, that's that's one of those ones so interesting right the mcv cell like he knew so kian was able to make that mcv push which you talk being so crucial right and then for marco to be like okay i can't give this up to smash the cell on the mcv to bring all that fodder into the fight and then Kian, Kian had that forward barracks, didn't get any value out of it. And then the problem was because Kian was planning on spamming from that forward barracks, he didn't have his other barracks waypointed. So when that barracks, uh, the forward barracks went down, his back barracks then just had 10 dogs sitting there AFK. That fodder could have swung the fight, but that's one of those ones, man. It's inch by inch, first person to make a mistake. And oftentimes it's not going to be Marco. Wow. Yeah.